Welcome again, brothers and sisters. This is Defending Zion and Blake, and today I want to talk about the gathering of the tribe of Judah. I've talked a lot about the gathering of the other tribes and how that's to occur, but today I want to discuss how the tribe of Judah is going to be gathered. And as I've mentioned before, uh, it's important to understand that there's really two types of gathering that we're talking about. And uh, Bruce R. McConkie highlights these in his book, Millennial Messiah. He says, The gathering of Israel consists first of receiving the restored gospel and of joining the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Next, it consists of assembling to whatever places are appointed for the worship of the Lord and the receipt of the fullness of his blessings. So there is both a spiritual gathering as well as a physical gathering. And we can actually see this in the scriptures as well. In Deuteronomy 30, uh, the Lord through Moses gives this promise. It shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee. And thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. And shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. And then he goes on and says, Then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. So first there's a return unto the Lord and an obeying of his voice, and then there is a gathering physically from among all the nations to the lands that were promised to their fathers. Now, as I go through this uh, gathering of the tribe of Judah, I've tried to do it in a kind of chronological sense uh, to kind of give us an idea of how these gatherings will proceed. But keep in mind, again, some of these scriptures are talking about spiritual gathering. Some of them are talking about physical gathering. So it's important to understand the difference. So first of all, in 2 Nephi 6.11, uh, we know that uh, an angel... Uh, talks to the prophet Jacob and tells him that those that are at Jerusalem uh, will be scattered and smitten and hated. And uh, these are particularly those of the tribe of Judah, because that's the, the bulk of the tribe that was dwelling at Jerusalem. But then uh, Jacob is also told that the Lord will be merciful, and he will gather them together unto the lands of their inheritance. So he'll gather them back to Jerusalem. In D&C 45, it says, This I have told you concerning Jerusalem, and when that day shall come, shall a remnant be gathered, uh, excuse me, be scattered among all nations, but they shall be gathered again, but they shall remain until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So here we have a remnant of the house of Israel, and as I've mentioned many times before, it's important to understand that uh, a remnant, uh, you know, is a portion of the tribe of Israel that's created, um, whether that's through covenant making or whether that's uh, done through physical destructions. So this remnant of the house of Israel, which dwelt at Jerusalem, so again, primarily the tribe of Judah, uh, is not going to be restored to Jerusalem uh, physically until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. In uh, D&C 90 verse 9, that through your administration they may receive the word, and through their administration the word may go forth unto the ends of the earth, unto the Gentiles first, and then, behold and lo, they shall turn unto the Jews. So in the latter days, those that are not literal, uh, literal or lineal descendants of the house of Israel are to receive the gospel and to be gathered first, and then they will help the lineal descendants uh, to be gathered to the gospel, to the church, and then finally to the lands of their inheritance. So first the Gentiles, then the Jews. Um, and this uh, pattern also continues. Uh, this is in 2 Nephi 10, uh, where covenant Israel is first gathered to Christ and then makes covenants with him. And then they'll be gathered physically to the lands of their inheritance. And uh, this particular scripture, you know, it kind of tells us that this gathering is to, it's to be from all parts of the earth, uh, either to Zion or to Jerusalem, right? Depending on where the lands of the inheritance go. But uh, this is really a worldwide gathering. Um, 3 Nephi 20, verses 31 through 33, And they shall believe in me, 
that I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and shall pray unto the Father in my name. Then shall their watchmen lift up their voice, and with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye. Then will the Father gather them together again, and give unto them Jerusalem for the land of their inheritance. So this house of Israel first needs to be gathered by believing in Jesus Christ and accepting his covenants. And then the Father will physically gather them together uh, with the rest of Israel and then give them Jerusalem as the land of their inheritance. Uh, in 1 Nephi 21, this is where we actually get a discussion about uh, a, really a gathering to Zion, right? Um, so there's this kind of imagery here where the Lord talks about clothing himself with them all as with an ornament or as a bride. Um, and we know that this has reference in other scriptures to Zion. But once uh, these people are gathered um, to this land of Zion, there's going to be such a great amount of people that, uh, you know, the people will say, this place is too straight for me, that there's, you know, not enough room for us to dwell and for us to inherit the land. And they'll ask for another place that they may dwell. So uh, even after the Gentiles have been destroyed off of the land of Zion, there still won't be enough room for all those that are of Israel that have converted. And so this is why it's important that uh, a portion of Israel be given uh, another land of inheritance, you know, the original land that was promised to their fathers. Um, I like in 2 Nephi 29 here where it discusses these records of all these different groups of Israel. Um, the Jews, right? In my other videos I've talked about how Nephi... Uh, when he's talking about Jews, he's talking about lineal covenant Israel, um, and this would include Judah. Uh, we also know the Nephites have their record, the Book of Mormon, and these are uh, the lineal uh, covenant tribe of Joseph. And then we're also going to get the records of the lost tribes, uh, ten lost tribes of Israel. And these words will all be gathered together in one, as the people will be gathered together in one, and they'll all be Israel. Um, Isaiah 11, this really gives a good timeline, and I've done a video on this already, uh, but a, it's a good timeline to understand the process, right? So what gathering starts first, and then what happens, right? Um, it's important to understand that this enzyme to the nations, the Lord's going to establish this. Uh, this is the new Jerusalem. So this needs to occur before uh, Judah is primarily gathered and before the uh, ten lost tribes are assembled. Now after this gathering takes place, then we have the tribes of Ephraim and the tribes of Judah being united. Uh, so their envy will depart and uh, no longer will Judah and Ephraim have this contention, but they'll be united as God's covenant people. Uh, Second Nephi 24, this is an important scripture to understand uh, because it gives us an understanding of this time period when uh, those of, of Judah and of the ten tribes need to be taken into another land, right? So uh, this scripture teaches that the strangers or the people uh, are the ones that are going to take the house of Israel from far unto their lands of promise. So from Zion unto Jerusalem. Um, this is a very clear reference to God's covenant people, Israel, and the remnant of Jacob in Zion that take the house of Israel back to Jerusalem to possess the lands of their inheritance. Um, Zechariah 10. Uh, this is also an important one to understand because here, uh, Zechariah, he uses uh, these names, so Egypt, Assyria, Gilead, uh, Lebanon. And we have to really understand this, I think, as Isaiah uses these terms, right? So the way Isaiah uses them, uh, Egypt is a representation of America or Zion. And then Assyria is a representation of the land from where the ten lost tribes were originally taken into captivity. So this scripture is teaching us that we're going to have uh, people, uh, two groups of people really. Uh, one group that comes from America, uh, from the land of Zion, back to the land of the inheritance. And the other group is going to come from Assyria, from the north countries. 
Um, now we know that the ten lost tribes are going to come to America first, to the land of Zion first. But they won't officially be restored from the north countries until they return to Jerusalem. And we also know that these two groups are promised that they'll be brought to the land of Gilead and Lebanon. And these are lands that are physically in the land of Jerusalem. In uh, DNC 133, it says, And let them who be of Judah flee unto Jerusalem, unto the mountain of the Lord's house. So those who are from the tribe of Judah, who are converted to the gospel in the church, uh, they're commanded to gather to uh, Jerusalem. And this is going to be their final gathering place, where they will uh, eventually receive the lands of their inheritance. Um, some modern prophets have also talked about how there will be some of Judah that will gather to Zion, but the vast majority are going to be gathered from all the world uh, to the land of Jerusalem. And Ezekiel, he also talks about this. He talks about how this gathering will be out of all nations, out of many people, and it's uh, going to be to a place where they can dwell safely. So they'll, they'll be brought to the land of their inheritance. And that safety isn't really going to occur until after uh, Christ comes on the Mount of Olives and destroys those enemies of uh, Judah. Now, uh, this scripture from Hosea, uh, this is an important one to understand because I think a lot of times we can, we can get confused about how this gathering is, is going to take place. So first of all, we know that the children of Israel are as the sand of the sea. Um, and there'll be really a, a group of these people that will be gathered together. It says the children of Judah and the children of Israel will be gathered together. Um, so you know, it's important to ask, is this the spiritual gathering that we're talking about? Is this the physical gathering? It's not really um, clear until it uh, talks about they shall come up out of the land. So we know from other scriptures, right, from uh, Isaiah, that uh, Judah and uh, Israel, Judah and Ephraim, right, they'll, they'll gather together, they'll be together, and then they appoint one to rule over them. And this one that is going to rule over them, um, this is going to be King David, and he will help to bring them out of the land of Zion, and he will help them to return unto the lands of their inheritance. So really, when we're talking about this gathering, this is going to be the physical gathering back to uh, Jerusalem. Um, and Isaiah 41 also is another reference to this uh, King David, who is the one that's going to help lead these tribes back. Um, he says that he's raised up one from the north. He shall come. He shall call upon my name. He shall come upon princes as upon mortar. And the first shall say to Zion, Behold, behold them. And I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. So we're told here that uh, King David is going to be one that's raised up from the north. Um, this could be interpreted to mean that he is going to be part of the ten lost tribes that will come from the north countries. But it's not really clear. Um, but he is promised to be the one that will bring good tidings to Jerusalem. So he will help lead them back to the lands of Jerusalem. And uh, again, Zechariah is another witness of this gathering, this physical gathering that will go back. Um, these many people will go back, right? Um, and there'll be other inhabitants that will see these uh, people that will return, and they'll have a desire also to go um, and to join God's covenant people and to return to the lands of their inheritance. Um, so it's important to understand that maybe part of this uh, physical gathering, it, this, that may occur for some people first, uh, before the actual spiritual gathering. You know, there are many um, in the world that see a return to Israel, to, to Jerusalem, as a fulfilling of, of the ancient scriptural promises. And so they may, you know, trust and rely upon that as they see others return to Jerusalem. And then afterwards they discover the truth of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and they receive the covenant and the, the promised blessings. Uh, there's also talk in the scriptures, particularly when it comes to uh, Judah, about 
how the Lord is going to cleanse Israel. Um, so this cleansing uh, really is a way for them um, to be tried and to be tested. And in particular, we know that there's the seven-year tribulation period that's going to occur in Jerusalem. That's part of this cleansing. Um, but there's also a cleansing in America as well, um, where the desolate lands of the Gentiles uh, in Jerusalem and in America will be inhabited. Um, this is again another uh, testimony from Jeremiah, just testifying that uh, the tribes of Israel and the tribes of Judah are going to come together out of the north, so from their lost or dispersed locations, and they're going to come to Jerusalem. Um, again, modern scripture, modern prophets have said that they will come from the land of Zion, uh, where they've already been gathered, and they'll return back to Jerusalem. Um, Zechariah testifies that the Lord is going to cause the tribe of Judah to inherit his portion in the land of Jerusalem. So there has to actually be a physical gathering back to Jerusalem. And Joseph Smith gave us a good understanding of this timeline and how it's to occur. He says, Judah must return, Jerusalem must be rebuilt, and the temple and water come out from under the temple, and the waters of the Dead Sea be healed. It will take some time to rebuild the walls of the city and the temple. And all this must be done before the Son of Man will make his appearance. Okay, So what appearance is this talking about? This is talking about his uh, return uh, to uh, the earth uh, in glory, basically. So all the tribe of Judah must be gathered. And like I said before, the, the main gathering of Judah is going to occur after Christ comes on the Mount of Olives. That's going to be the great gathering time. After that time to the time of the great and dreadful day. Uh, the temple needs to be rebuilt, right? And ordinances restored. And people need to accept the covenant. And this covenant, uh, this is an important thing to understand as well, is that uh, the covenant that the Lord is going to make in the latter days is a covenant which uh, really Judah has never really received. It's a covenant where, you know, basically they have to accept the baptism, right? Uh, they have to accept the Holy Ghost, um, and then they have to be cleansed, uh, just like we're taught in the gospel, right? They have to be cleansed from all their sin, and, and then they'll be given the gift of the Holy Ghost. So this covenant um, is a part of this gathering process. This is part of the spiritual gathering. Um, the Lord is going to give them a new heart, and he'll give them his judgments and his statutes. So he'll give them celestial law. And once he does this for them, uh, then they can inherit the land of their fathers. And Ezekiel continues to talk about this. Uh, he says this is going to be a new and everlasting covenant of peace. And I think the wording there is important to understand, right? Um, it's a new and everlasting covenant of gospel and that's been restored in our day. Um, and that is really the gospel that we're talking about. And then the Lord's sanctuary, or his temple, is also uh, going to need to be in their midst. And this is because the people need to uh, be revealed the higher law. They need to be able to make these higher covenants with him. And they need to learn how to actually see his face. Uh, how to receive the promised blessings, the highest blessings that the Lord has for us. And Jeremiah also is a second witness of this covenant that, that Israel and the tribe of Judah must make with the Lord in the latter days. Uh, this covenant allows Israel and Judah to once again become God's covenant people. It allows them to see his face, and it allows them to enjoy his presence. Uh, Joseph Smith taught that the time has at last arrived when the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob has set his hand again the second time to recover the remnants of his people which have been left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea and with them to bring in the fullness of the Gentiles and establish that covenant with them. So again, it's a reference back to this covenant I've been discussing. And this is the covenant which was promised when their sin should be taken away. This covenant has never been established with the house of Israel 
nor with the house of Judah. For it requires two parties to make a covenant, and those two parties must be agreed, or no covenant can be made. So again, this is a new and everlasting covenant that Judah and the rest of the house of Israel must make. Now, as I mentioned before, Judah is going to have their time of pain. Um, and this is a time where the Lord will sanctify them. He'll uh, create uh, a holy people that are able to dwell in his presence day and night. So this is really referring to the time of tribulation. Uh, this is the time, seven years of tribulation, where the plagues will be poured out. And all of these things are designed to create a sanctified people. It's also during this time of tribulation that uh, the Lord will send two sons of Jerusalem. And as we look at Revelation chapter 11, we, we see who these two sons are. Uh, these are the two witnesses, the two olive trees, uh, that, that will testify in Jerusalem and perform great miracles. Um, they will be ones that will help to gather the tribe of Judah uh, to a degree. And, uh, you know, it's important to understand that their mission really is directed at those that, of Judah, those that are dwelling in Jerusalem at this time. And Judah will need to be gathered, uh, in a sense, and, and to a degree, uh, because there needs to be those that fight against Judah, those that fight against Israel, um, the Gentile armies. So there's really those two groups and then that's where the Savior comes on the Mount of Olives. Um, and this is prophesied of in 2 Nephi 6.14 that the Messiah will set himself again the second time to recover his people. And then he will manifest himself unto them in power and great glory unto the destruction of their enemies. And when that day cometh, when they shall believe in him, and none will be destroyed that believe in him. So this is in reference to Christ's appearance on the Mount of Olives uh, to those covenant people or those of Israel that still wait for their Messiah. So obviously this is Judah. Um, and he promises when he appears that the en their enemies will be destroyed. So this is really, you know, as I mentioned, how the gathering of Judah is going to take place. I've included after this in the presentation some other quotes from modern prophets uh, that discuss this gathering and uh, some of the things that need to occur uh, prior to the gathering uh, to Israel. And then also, you know, whether there's this question also of whether like this political gathering that's taking place to Israel, uh, where the state of Israel has been established, whether that's a fulfillment of the prophecies of scripture or not. So I'd encourage you to go through and look at those references and study this more and uh, seek to understand the gathering. Uh, seek to understand the blessings that are promised for the tribe of Judah. There may be some of you that uh, in your patriarchal blessings that you have been told that you'll uh, inherit blessings through the tribe of Judah. So it's important to understand how this gathering takes place and what Judah's role is going to be in the latter days. I testify that the, the prophets... Uh, are clear, and the scriptures are clear. Um, they bear witness in multiple ways, um, give multiple witnesses of the truth of these things. And so that's how I know that these things will come to pass, as I've said. And I bear testimony of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.